in your word is my hope. Our third reading is taken from Evangelii Gaudium, the Jew of the Gospel, the Apostolic Exhortation on the Proclamation of the Gospel in Today's World by Pope Francis. Pastoral Activity and Conversion an ecclesial renewal which cannot be deferred. Paragraph 27 I dream of a missionary option, that is, a missionary impulse capable of transforming everything, so that the Church's customs, ways of doing things, times and schedules, language and structures, can be suitably channeled for the evangelization of today's world rather than for self-preservation. The renewal of structures demanded by pastoral conversion can only be understood in this light, as part of an effort to make them more mission-oriented, to make ordinary pastoral activity on every level more inclusive and open, to inspire in pastoral workers a constant desire to go forth and in this way to elicit a positive response from all those whom Jesus summons to friendship with him. As John Paul II once said to the bishops of Oce Oce Oceania, all renewal in the Church must have mission as its goal, if it is not to fall prey to a kind of ecclesial introversion. The parish is not an outdated institution, precisely because it possesses great flexibility. It can assume quite different contours depending on the openness and missionary creativity of the pastor and the community. While certainly not the only institution which evangelizes, if it proves capable of self-renewal and constant adaptivity, adapt adaptivity, it continues to be the Church living in the midst of the homes of her sons and daughters. This presumes that it really is in contact with the homes and the lives of its people, and does not becomes, become a useless structure out of touch with people, or a self-absorbed cluster made up of a chosen few. The parish is the presence of the Church in a given territory, an environment for hearing God's word, for growth in the Christian life, for dialogue, proclamation, charitable outreach, worship and celebration. In all its activities, the parish encourages and trains its members to be evangelizers. It is a community of communities, a sanctuary where the thirsty come to drink in the midst of their journey, and a center of constant missionary outreach. We must admit, though, that the call to review and renew our parishes has not yet sufficed to bring them nearer to people, to make them environments of living communion and participation, and to make them completely mission-oriented. Here ends the third reading. Thanks, Kim Sinai.